Hello again. Welcome to part two of my video about the benefits of being a late bloomer. All right, let's dive right in. It used to be believed that the prefrontal cortex, the large part of the brain that plays a central role in cognitive control functions, was fully developed in humans by the age of 25. But according to Rich Kallgaard, the author of Late Bloomers, um, 25 is actually the median age that the prefrontal cortex becomes fully developed, with it developing much earlier in some people and for others, the prefrontal cortex not becoming fully developed until well into their 30s. A scientific paper on adolescent maturity in the brain that I've linked down below notes. The frontal lobes, home to key components of the neural circuitry underlying executive functions such as planning, working memory, and impulse control, are among the last areas of the brain to mature. They may not be fully developed until halfway through the third decade of life. Harrison Ford worked full-time as a carpenter until he was 35 years old and landed the role of Han Solo. Lucille Ball made it big at 40, but only after her and her husband, Desi Arnaz, decided to pave their own paths by creating their own sitcom. Jack Ma was a school teacher who was rejected from Harvard 10 times before he started Alibaba and became one of the richest people in the world. As for a recent example, earlier this year, Jun Ha was awarded the Fields Medal, which is essentially the Nobel Prize for Math, at the age of 39. 39 might still sound young, but he didn't actually even start getting into mathematics until the age of 23 during his final year of college. And before that, he had dropped out of high school to be a poet. And remember Sarah Blakely in my previous video, the woman whose father would regularly ask her what she had failed at that week? Well, after failing her LSATs twice, Sarah was in her late twenties selling fax machines when she came up with the idea for Spanx. She not only ideated the vision for her company during this time, she quietly spent the next two years of her nights researching, prototyping, and learning everything that she possibly could about her product and her market, all while maintaining her full-time day job. Sarah knew nothing about this industry that she was getting herself into, but to her, the failure would have been in the not trying. And as incredible as all of these examples are, there are still all of the late bloomers who may not be household names or winning prestigious medals or becoming billionaires, but they are still absolutely crushing it in their respective fields and living very happy, successful, and fulfilled lives. Being a late bloomer means that you have more life experience under your belt by the time that you start to bloom. And the older you are and the more life experience you have, well, that just gives you more to draw from. You have more seemingly unrelated dots that you can connect and more interesting ingredients available to you to create your own magical alchemy that nobody else can duplicate. The more dots and the more unrelated the dots, the more new, unique paths and trajectories you can create that someone else on a more linear or limited path can't compete with. No disrespect to Ponyboy's tagline here. Staying gold is great. But wunderkinds are already known for being gold. Born this way. So let's say that that's all they know because their successes began at such an early age. Well, then that means there isn't 
as much for them to compare that golden feeling to. Not only is the abstract unknown of major failure probably completely terrifying if it's never been experienced, well, that also means that the sweet savor of success doesn't have the bitter punch of resounding failure to compare itself to. I bet only sweet success still tastes very sweet, but I do think that there is something to be said about having something in contrast to compare it to. Late bloomers have lots of normalcy, perhaps even some hard times, and maybe even some major failures to gain some of that perspective and resilience that I've mentioned earlier. These failures and hard times are probably not quite as scary because they actually happened as opposed to imaginary fears in the abstract. And those successes taste so, so good once you finally achieve them. In fact, I think that the more we fail and the harder the success is to achieve, the sweeter it is and the better it tastes when we finally get those wins. The writer and artist Austin Kleon writes in his book, Keep Going, that he has zero interest in any of the 20 under 20 or 30 under 30 listicles out there. He is way more interested in seeing an eight over 80 list of achievers and the experiences and insights that they would be able to share about how to live a happy and fulfilled life. I am 100% in agreement with that. If you're watching this video and you feel like you haven't yet blossomed and you're worried that maybe you never will, if there's one thing I would like you to take away from this video is knowing that you are in fact blossoming right now. In James Clear's fantastic book, Atomic Habits, he asks the reader to imagine that you're sitting in a room with an ice cube on a table in front of you and the room is set to 25 degrees Fahrenheit temperature. Ever so slowly, the temperature is being raised one degree until eventually it will hit 32 degrees. It is only then that the ice cube begins to melt. A small one degree shift, seemingly no different than any of the other minor temperature increases before it, but that one degree unlocked this huge change. As James Clear says, breakthrough moments are often the result of many previous actions which build up the potential required to unleash a major change. Similarly, habits often appear to make no difference until you cross a critical threshold and unlock a new level of performance. So what we may not detect are all of those incremental increases to get to that almost imperceptible shift that can make all of the difference. So remember that we are always blooming. We may feel and see just the big growth spurts, um, but not always the incremental gains that got us to that threshold. The more we feed ourselves with knowledge and experience, well, like sunshine, water, or oxygen for a tree or a flower, this will only help us grow. Or in the case of the ice cube example, it will turn up the heat just that much more quickly. Um, so in any case, keep growing, keep going, and keep blooming. I think it's important to mention that you can feel like a late bloomer at any age. I've been feeling like a late bloomer since 
I was 10 years old. And even though I've technically been learning and growing and blooming this entire time, I don't feel like I experienced any kind of spurt or even started blossoming until I turned 40 years old. Like our individual DNA, our developments are such unique experiences. Nobody has lived a life identical to ours and no two days are exactly the same. There may be days where you might feel like things are completely hopeless and you are an abject failure, but I'm guessing that there are probably also some days where you feel like you are just completely winning at life and everything's going right and you are invincible. No feelings or moments we experience are static and permanent. And each of these moments are helping to shape who we are becoming and the unique fingerprint that we are ultimately leaving on the universe. All right. Um, that is it for part two of the benefits of being a late bloomer. Uh, if you haven't seen part one, I will link it in the description and I'll probably put it on a card here somewhere. Um, but if you like this video, I hope that you will hit the like button and subscribe. Um, and all right. Uh, thank you again. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.